Shape Optimization versus a Generative Design. In this video, we'll identify a topology optimized part and a generative designed part. Topology optimization, or shape optimization as it's called in Fusion 360, and generative design often get lumped together in the same category. However, the two functionalities couldn't be more different, so let's explore design and identify the differences between generative design and topology optimization. First, we're going to take a look at this bracket. It connects a piece of equipment to a fixed wall and has a specific load case. When we design something like this manually, we have to use our own experience and we have to begin a design and then figure out if it's strong enough through testing and validation. With generative design, however, what we're actually doing is we're telling the software exactly which components need to stay, what things we need to avoid, and then giving it a whole host of criteria. Things like materials, manufacturing methods, and whether or not we want to optimize the stiffness of our design or minimize the mass. There are many other criteria that we can define, but these are the basics of using a generative design study. When a generative design study is run, what it's actually doing is it's looking at the amount of load that's transferred from the different sets of objects in our design. It then adds or removes material based on those results, and through those iterations, we get results like we see on the screen. When we talk about a shape-optimized or topology-optimized body, what we're actually taking a look at is the load path. When we talk about the load path, we still need to define things like our loads and constraints. We need to take a look at certain areas where we can build, but ultimately what we're getting is the areas in which the load is transferring from, in this case, our fixed constraint at our wall to our load applied at the equipment. So we can see here how the mesh is generated and we can then use this to base our design off of. But again, this is all done manually, and the load results here are not actually taking into account the magnitude. They're only looking at the load path. So when we compare a generative design and a manual design and a shape-optimized design, they all look very different. The manually designed bracket is based on our experience, while the shape-optimized design is based on the path of the load going through our constraints and our loads defined in that study. But when we look at our generative design, this is based on the loads that we applied and all of the other settings that we defined, such as our materials and our manufacturing methods. So not only are we getting a final result, but we're also getting a result that is intended to hold up to the loads and constraints that we defined. We could take this a step further into simulation and validate the results, but in general, the generative design is going to be based on those actual loads and constantly iterated until we come up with a converged or a final solution. So when you begin comparing shape optimization and generative design, there are some major differences in the results that you get. Shape optimization is great for things like 2D linkages, just to see how the load transfers between the various points. However, when you begin working in more of a 3D environment and you have more complex solutions, using generative design is gonna be a much more robust solution and it will allow you to ultimately make a design that can hold up to the stresses of your situations. So in this case, I'm gonna save this design and we're not gonna be looking at this in our course, but it's important that we understand and we identify the differences between how a topology optimized part is created and how a generative design one is.